bit here. Hi, Lily. Hi, Jeff. I don't see them. You're on the Shabbat Shalom. Hi, Mark and Bill. Hi, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Hi, Julie. Hi, Lily. Good to see you. Shabbat Shalom from the villages. Hey, Ginger and David, where are they? Shabbat Shalom. They have to talk for you to see them. Yeah, tell them to say hello, John. Hi, Barbara. Oh, hi, hi John. Barbara. How are you? Hi. Good, thank you. Love. We're going to be. We'll give everyone just a moment, all of our Facebook friends to join us. Uh, we can find the link to the C-Door to the digital version of this. Uh, we can find that if we're on Zoom, we can find that in the chat. If we're on Facebook, we'll be able to find that in the comments uh, or it might show up right here in a few moments. And we'll get started in just a moment, friends. Shalom, Cantor. Uh, it is so nice. I look forward to these moments each and every week because we get to be together in these beautiful, beautiful ways. And being together is so a part of what we have been doing as Jews for thousands and thousands of years. This week, all Jews around the world are reading from the Torah portion of Shmini. In Shmini, we get these two really different stories, but all of a sudden, we get all the rules of keeping kosher, of kashrut. And you see, if you ever watch the Bim Bomb videos, it's at bimbomb.com, the one for Shmini is by far my favorite. Go and find it after this. Maybe we'll put a link in the, uh, in the comments but there's a kosher animal song, which gets stuck in my head for days. But if we go way back, way before YouTube videos, in the reform movement, in those early days, in the early 1800s, the early radical rabbis, like Rabbi David Einhorn, taught that keeping kosher 
was mostly part of an ancient Levitical religious system and thus was no longer binding on Reformed Jews. Others said, no, we're not going to keep kosher because it's those rules, those laws that have the social consequence of isolating Jews in their diaspora communities. And then there were many others who were saying, no, 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 keeping kosher is something that's really special to us. And if we look a little later in the late 1800s, when the reformers here in America in 1873, they decided that all of the reform congregations under the UAHC, now the Union for Reform Judaism, all those synagogues had to maintain keeping kosher or kashrut so that they could build an inclusive Jewish religious movement. I found this fascinating. We kept kosher to be inclusive so that any Jews can join us. Any Jews could come into our houses of worship. It was about 10 years later that at the first ordination of the Hebrew Union College, the uh, seminary for Reform Judaism, they served a non-kosher meal, which was later called the Trefa Banquet. There was every non-kosher thing there. But keeping kosher, as we read about in this week's Torah portion, Shemini, Rabbi Simeon Maslin talks about it being about religious experimentation, that we should try, that we should try something new. In these times where everything is different, everything feels a little bit different, we're kind of broken from our normal ways. This seems like a perfect time to go about trying new things. We want to try keeping this aspect of kosher. We have a week. Let's go try it. We want to try this aspect. We want to try this aspect of Shabbat. We want to try this aspect of whatever Jewish part it is. This is our time. This is our time to try it for a week. See how it is. See if it brings us meaning. Just like each and every one of us here is trying out what it means to pray with a virtual community. And so to pray with our virtual community, we have to bring in Shabbat together. And so if we have candlesticks, if we have Shabbat candles ready, then we will get ready to say our blessing over the prayers as led by our fantastic Cantor Ben David. Thank you. <laughs> so as Rabbi Gelman, are you going to light those? I am. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitvotav, v'tivanu lehad liknem, lehad liknem, shel shabbat. This is what happens when your rabbi accidentally mutes our cantor and she can't unmute herself, you have to hear my voice. But we'll go back to Cantor Ben David for our prayer over our, over our wine to make this day holy. Baruch HaTadonai Eloheinu Melch HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Baruch HaTadonai Eloheinu Melch HaOlam Asher kiddushanu b'mitzvot ha'virat ha'banu L'shabbat kocho b'yahaba u'vraton hinchilanu Zikaron l'masei v'reshit Ki hu yom t'chila l'mikrai kodesh Zecher l'tziad mitraim Ki vanu Bachar tam viotanu kidashta 
מכל העמים, בשבת קודשך, ואהבה וברצון הנחתנו, ברוך אתה ה' מקדש השבת. אמן. I'm going to stop my video for a little bit, Rabbi. I'm going to let you take Lachado D and Shalom Alechem on your own, and I'll be back. Wonderful. So uh, with the rest of my clergy team here as well, we are going to turn to page 100 and 134. And there we're going to find the words of Lachado D. Actually, 138. I'll give you a moment if you are trying to find it in the virtual one. It's a little more difficult. And we're paying attention to the pages that are on the virtual page, not the, uh, not the actual pages of the PDF per se. But we, so on page 138, we have the words of Lecha Dodi saying, appreciating the moments that that, that God and Shabbat, that Shabbat enters our time. So we're going to do verses 1, 2, 5, and 9. And as the cantor has given me the ability to, to do this, I'm going to put my talit on real quick. And on our last verse, if we're able, we can rise. Lechado di li krat kala, pene shabat ne kabela. Lechado di li krat kala, pene shabat ne kabela. Shamor vizahor bidi borehad, ishmi anu elam yuchat, nadonai echad ushumo echad, le shemuti peret velitila. Lecha dodi, lecha dodi likrat kala, pene shabat ne kabela. Lecha dodi likrat kala, pene shabat ne kabela. Likrat shabat lechu venelcha, ki hi mekor haberacha, merosh mi kedem nesucha. Sof maase ba machrat hila lecha dodi lecha dodi likrat kala ne shabat ne kabela lecha dodi likrat kala ne shabat ne kabela first five itoreri itoreri kiva orech kumi ori. Uri uri shir da beri kevod Adonai alayk nigla lecha dodi lecha dodi likrat kala pene shabat ne kabela lecha dodi likrat kala pene shabat ne kabela. Oh, we be shalom a teret bala, gam be simcha utso hola, tochemune am segula, bo we kala, bo we kala. Lecha dodi, lecha dodi likrat kala, penesha baneka bela. Lecha dodi likrat kala, pene shabat nikabela. Rabbi Gelman, you're hired. I had a little yeah. family, I had a little family affair, but you make a pretty darn good canter. Great. I well, I hope, I hope we get to hear your voice a little bit more. <laughs> so we're going to turn to page 142 as we, our prayer over Shalom Aleichem, is a prayer that welcomes the angels into our homes. And how much better than the hundred or so angels that have virtually come into our homes than to welcome them. Page 142. 
146, we get ready to truly be ourselves in prayer with the Baruch Hu asking, are you ready? And with our whole selves, we answer, I am ready. We rise if we are able. Baruch Hu et As we turn to page 158, I want to share with you um, a bit of a midrash that I love. And that is that um, it is so interesting, crazy, miraculous, that when the Israelites were singing the Micha Mocha, when they were singing the song of the sea, and then the women sang together, that Miriam led them in song with a timbrel in her hand. And how was it that she, coming out of this narrow place of Egypt, would have actually not only thought about bringing an instrument of music, but also how did she do that and why would she do that? 
And so the Midrash says it's because she understood that there was going to be reason to sing praises. There was going to be reason to break out in spontaneous song. She knew that actually for those beautiful moments to take place that feel so spontaneous, we need to prepare. And so now as we are here in this time where sometimes we feel confined, much of the time we feel confined, what are those things that we are shoring up right now? What are the things that we have amongst us that we want to bring into a time to come, a time of celebrating, a time of praising? We can find spots right here, right now to have reason to sing and yet we also want to think about a future when we're all going to be together again and what are going to be those instruments we bring with us to sing together in song and in praise. Mm -hmm. And I know for me that these Shabbat moments, they punctuate my week in such a beautiful way. They make it so that all the days don't run together, that there's this day that we set apart for music, for community, for song, for prayer, Shabbat. <laughs> At Hashabbat, Lassot, at Hashabbat, the door rotam, very tolam, Veni, Uvein, Bene Israel, Oti, Leolam, Leolam. If we're able, we rise for our tefillah. Page 164. Adonai, Sifatai Taf, Ufia Gita Hila Taha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruchata Adonai, Hello Heinu, Hello Havotinu Vimotenu, Hello He Abraham, Hello He Itak, Hello He Yaakov. Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Lea, Ha El Hagadol, Hagibor, Hanora, El El Yung, Gomel Hasarim Tovim, the Kone Hakol, the Zoher Hasteavot, Vimahot, who may be Gula, the Pnevenehem, the Manchamo, the Ahava, Melahose, Moshia, whom again. Baruchata 
מחיי הכל ורחמים רבים. צומח נופלים ורופח עולים, ומתיר אסורים, ומקיים אמונתו, משני עפר, מי כמוך בעל דיברות, ומידו מלאך, מלאך ממית, ומחייך, ומצמיח ישוע ונאמנת על החיות הכל. ברוך אתה אדוני מחיי הכל, אתה קדוש ושמך קדוש וקדושים בכל יום יעלו לך סלע, ברוך אתה אדוני האל הקדוש. An invitation to silent prayer by our beloved teacher of blessed memory, Rabbi Richard Levy. Our ancestors prayed, each through their own experience of God, each through their own visions, which we have come to share. Abraham with the fervor of justice pleaded to the cause of cities. Sarah in the pain of waiting, dared to hope for new life. Isaac meditating alone in the field, lifted his eyes to find love. Rebecca asked for the ability to discern God's call. Jacob climbed the rungs of his night into heaven, seeking destiny. Leah dreamed of love, and Rachel sought harmony. In our own silent prayer, we, as they, seek God's presence. עושה שלום עם רומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, לימו עימו, אמן. או קנטר, אני אוהב שאנחנו נמצאים בזמן של האומר, ואני אוהב שהיום אנחנו נמצאים בזמן קנט. I like this because we, in this time, had to figure out, as our sages did, whether we would say Ba Omer, um, for in the count of the Omer, or La Omer, to the count of the Omer. And sometimes it is wonderful to envision a world that we want to behold, a world of peace and goodness and freedom for all people. And sometimes we want to say that in these moments, we are going to seek and find joy, acknowledge what is, but also acknowledge that in all that is, there's beauty still. And so in this time we say, we count the Omer, La Omer, but in so doing, we also say that in this time, we are not only counting our days, but we're figuring out ways to make these days count. On page 570, ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר קידשנו במצוותיו ודיברנו על ספירת העומר. And in this evening um, we have a special count and that count is the 
It is the ninth evening of the counting of the Omer. So Hayom Tesha Yom Shehem Echad Shavua Bayamim La Omer. Today is the ninth day, which is one week and two days, so Ustein days of counting the Omer. And in this time, we realize that one of the very special things that we do in making our days count is we think about birthdays. So if there's somebody who has an April birthday, um, we invite you to come a little closer to your screen. Um, and if you are, if you can put either in um, the chat, if you're in our Zoom, or in the comments, if you're on Facebook Live, and tell us who's selling, celebrating a birthday and what day of the month you celebrate this birthday, we'll call you out. So I'll give you a moment to gather, to um, write to us. I'll invite um, Rabbi Gelman maybe to look on our Facebook um, as I continue to see whether somebody um, is so brave as to tell us whether they are celebrating an April birthday. In this time of celebrating and in this time of counting and in this time of making sure that our days count, we want to say to all of you who are celebrating an April birthday, may this year be filled for you with life adventures that help your resiliency, help you to see the power that you have within, to be able to be appreciated by others in our community, to find that in this year you find great growth, life adventures, both being able to find satisfaction, being challenged for growth, and ultimately finding peace. And with that, we thank God for giving us life, for sustaining us, and allowing us to reach this time and celebrate your birthday. And especially we're celebrating Sam Pomerantz, whose birthday is April 26th. We're celebrating Annabelle Goldstein, Susan Sipes, and uh, Brandon Simmons, and Carly Carmel. Happy birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Can we sing a Shehefianu for that? Please. Please, let's do. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Shehefianu b'kiyamanu b'higiyanu l'azman hazeh Ah, 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 ah. And so in this time of counting the Omer and appreciating blessings of birthdays, we also think of those who are in need of healing, of body, of mind, of spirit. And so if there are those you are thinking of who are in need of the peace of healing, please share their names. Lubank Kostarzewski. Morton Stillman. Birthdays. Christina Hansen. Kathleen Dorothy. Carlos Tavares. All of the essential workers. And Anne Friedman. And those who have been mentioned and also those who have not been mentioned, but we think of and hold in our hearts. We sing these words of Misha Barach, page 371. <laughs> May the source of strength, 
who bless the ones before us. Help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Bless those in need of healing with Rafua Shlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. Rabbi Rossoff. Thank you, Cantor, just, just so beautiful. Friends, in the nine years that I was um, serving here at Temple Sholem in the 80s, I, I was privileged and honored to be able to stand at the pulpit and introduce to the congregation some of the real luminaries in the world of Jewish scholarship, music, and the arts. I can't remember, however, introducing any of those great individuals with more joy and personal satisfaction that I feel right now introducing our special guest for this Shabbat. It's not only my decades of friendship with Rabbi Weinberg and his extended family, which includes leaders and teachers in the American Reformed Jewish community that I say this. It's mostly because having been involved in Artsa and Reformed Judaism in Israel since my Temple Sholem days, I truly stand in awe of Rabbi Weinder, Weinberg's tireless efforts and amazing accomplishments in a relatively short time in really ramping up and raising the bar and bringing progressive Zionism to the reform movement and bringing reform Judaism to the Jewish state. Rabbi Josh Weinberg is a product of our reform movement here in Chicago, spent many, many years in Asrui, still does. He made Aliyah in 2003 with his incredible wife, Mara. He taught in the faculty of the Reform um, Nifty EIE High School program in Israel, where I imagine he uh, taught and, uh, and uh, guided many students from Temple Sholem. He served in the Israel Defense Forces and remains a reserve officer in the IDF's spokespersons unit. He was ordained by H-U-C-G-I-J-I-R in the Israeli rabbinic program. And recognizing his outstanding leadership and educational abilities as an educator of educators, he was appointed as president of ARTSA, the Association of Reform Zionists of America. And now, subsequently, he's serving as vice president of the URJ, our reform movement for Israel and uh, reform Zionism and still serves as ex executive director of Artsa. Reading his weekly insights in the uh, political realm of uh, Israel has kept many of us abreast as to what's really, really going on there. And so it is with great honor and sense of privilege and deep, deep joy that I introduce Rabbi Josh Weinberg this evening, looking forward to learning once again from one of the true leaders of our movement. Josh, it's all yours. Well, Rabbi Rosa, thank you so much. You are too kind and you really don't know how much that means to me, that uh, introduction. And um, I was thinking about the many years that I've known you and your family and was uh, recently reminded uh, that, uh, you know, shown a picture by my own mom, who, <laughs> of course, we go back many years of, you and I, when I was, uh, I think, about two or three years old, standing there. So it's really a pleasure to be with you now. And thank you so much for the kind words. And thank you also so much, Rabbi Canover and Rabbi Gelman and Cantor Ben David, for welcoming me into the virtual space of uh, Temple Sholem. And I'm only too sorry that we can't join uh, together in person. 
and I really look forward for, for the time when we can once again. Um, my relationship, of course, with your congregation goes back many, many years. And in fact, uh, before I made Aliyah and moved to Israel, as, uh, as Rabbi Rostov shared with you, um, I lived uh, not too far away on a small street called Melrose and uh, Lakeshore Drive, just a few blocks down from Temple Sholom, and uh, spent many spent much time there. Um, and uh, as I'm thinking about the illustrious clergy of your congregation, of course, I had many, many deep philosophical conversations and and arguments about Israel, about Zionism, about Judaism with uh, with Rabbi Fred Short, Salah Shalom, and uh, so it would behoove me to to, to mention him as well as as, uh, as I'm as I'm with you tonight. And he was, of course, one of the great leaders of our movement and of uh, Reform Judaism, and uh, we, of course, miss him very much. Um, I don't think that I have to tell you, uh, or it wouldn't be terribly profound to say that we are in an interesting time right now, <laughs> um, to, to say the least, or the understatement of the century here. We are in an interesting time that we don't quite know uh, when it will end or when it will cease or when we'll be able to be back to normal, so to speak, or when... Um, if there will be a normal ever again, or if this is the new normal. And so we are doing what Jews did for centuries and millennia. We are adapting, and we are learning how to rebuild Jewish life, and we are learning how to thrive under the most adverse conditions right now. But our interesting time is not only about the pandemic that we are all that has really brought the world down to its knees and forced all of us to flee the uh, public space and go only into the virtual as we um, sit in what the Talmud or the Mishnah refers to as the Dalit Amot of the, the four walls, you know, the four cubits of our, of our own homes. We're also in a fascinating time in our Jewish calendar year. We've just completed Pesach. Raise your hands. How many of you are relieved to have finished Pesach right now? Okay, that's great. We have finished Pesach, and we are now moving into what some of us call the Yom. Of course, on Monday, we will bring in Yom HaShoah, the Memorial Day for the Holocaust. And just a week later, we will bring in a Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaAtzmaut, Israeli Memorial Day and Israel Independence Day. Now, I want, us to, I want to make a suggestion. I want to suggest that maybe we think about these days a little bit differently than we have in the past. Of course, these are the days when Jews in Israel come together and flock to mourn deeply. And then in almost a bipolar experience, they go from the deepest lows to the highest highs as they celebrate this miracle of existence, which is now the 72-year-old state of Israel. I want to suggest that we juxtapose these days that take place in the springtime, beginning from Yom HaShoah and going through Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzma'ut, with the days of memorial and remembrance that we experience in the fall, what we refer to as the Yamim Hanoraim, the days of awe, starting with Rosh Hashanah at the beginning of Tishrei, and then moving in 10 days later, to Yom Kippur, to our Day of Atonement. And I want to suggest that these days offer us some balance to the calendar year with what we experience in the fall and then again in the spring. And it was actually the first Israeli reform rabbi, whose name was Rabbi Moti Rotem, he argues that these seven days between Holocaust Remembrance Day, Memorial Day, and Independence Day, should serve a similar purpose, actually, to the Yamim Noraim, to the days of awe that we experienced in the month of Tishrei back in the fall. Are you okay? Can we hear me okay? Okay, great. He gives these days also a name. And so if we call the time between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur the Yamim Noraim, these days he calls the Shivat Yamei Teuda which roughly translates as the seven days of bearing witness. And he explains the, the meaning of these days as follows. During the seven days of bearing witness, the nation of Israel needs to, as a community, 
examine themselves, check from year to year how much they are succeeding in fulfilling the destiny that has fallen to them, their mission, the legacy of death of the Holocaust, and the legacy of life of Independence Day. During these seven days, it is appropriate that the nation of Israel engages in introspection and self-reflection about how they are measuring up to this destiny that stands before them to build the future of the nation of Israel for each individual, him or herself. These seven days of bearing witness need to apply also to the individual, and especially to society and its institutions, the public institutions. Different divisions of society need to examine themselves and their activities during these days, these days of, of, of documentation, of, of memorial. Now, the Shabbat that we're going to celebrate, which will take place just a week from tonight, which is Shabbat between Holocaust Remembrance Day and Independence Day, has received a name as well, and we call it Shabbat Tkuma. This Shabbat of Revival. This revival represents the dramatic turn from the tragedy of the Holocaust to the realization of the dream of a Jewish state in just a few years. But it also represents how we can use an ancient paradigm to create meaning in our modern events. This meaning can serve to connect us to our collective destiny as a Jewish people in ways that resonate, hopefully, with Jews today. You see, as we undergo this process, this process of what we call cheshbon hanefesh, or introspection. I'm going to tell you something that may be obvious, but I'll say it nonetheless. And then I think that the state of Israel is a tremendous success story. That when I think back on all that was created in just 72 short years, I, I almost can't believe what has been accomplished. In addition to the physical infrastructure of the state, all of its technological advances and important achievements. And I hear we're examining customer service, which is coming in a few years, hopefully. That was a joke. I think all of these things has, in, in addition to all these important achievements and technology and being a startup nation, the modern state of Israel has also totally revamped and reimagined what it means to be Jewish. In that sense, I personally found exactly what I was looking for. You see, I found a society where my holidays, my Jewish holidays, are the national holidays, where the ATM wishes you Shabbat Shalom, and you can have a Talmudic argument with a taxi driver at random. But slightly more deep and perhaps nuanced than that, Israeli Jewish society are where Jews struggle and reinvent for them what it means to be Jewish on a daily basis. It is the true melting pot of Jewish traditions where Jews from one over, over 100 different countries came together to try and figure out what this all means. What is it going to look like in the public sphere? We are completely you know, reimagining what a, Jewish, a complete Jewish society would look like. Now, with all of its successes and miracles, Israel is also far from perfect. We have, of course, made our share of mistakes. I need to work very hard to help Israel be the country and the society that it can and should be. So with that, we have to ask the question, what is Zionism going to be today? Of course, we read on Yom Ha'atzma'ut and Independence Day, the traditional reading from the traditional scroll that we attribute to this holiday, which is none other than the Declaration of Independence, where it talks about a country that will aspire towards freedom and justice and peace, and will envision um, a freedom of religion and tolerance of every different sex, race, and creed, just as the prophets of Israel talked about. Now, my friends, I don't have to tell you that if we look at the report card of the State of Israel, we haven't quite exactly fulfilled all of those high aspirations that we have outlined in our Declaration of Independence written 72 years ago. But what I do want to tell you is that despite some who say that Zionism has died or Zionism has ended with the establishment of the state 72 years ago, I would say, in fact, the opposite. Never have I been more committed 
to what it means to be a Zionist today. And I'll tell you that while I no longer go to sleep at night worrying that there will be a state of Israel when I wake up in the morning, I do now worry deeply about the soul of the state of Israel. You see, because so many Israelis have come to the conclusion that having a Jewish state doesn't necessarily mean having a Jewish community. And having now need to reinvent what it means to be religious and what it means to be Jewish because the polarizing dichotomy between religious and secular no longer answers the needs of the mainstream. And so in this we all, we find ourselves. And when we sit at our homes now, and I think we all have a lot of time to sit at home and reflect and do that deep introspection, both on a personal and a national level, my hope is that we can come out of this with two conclusions. One is that now is the time to reinvent what it means to be Jewish in the Jewish state. And that is exactly what our reform movement is doing. With its over 52 congregations, its, its own Israel Religious Action Center fighting both in the courts and in the Knesset, we are changing what it means. We are making sure that religion is not just for them, but it's for all of us. We're understanding that Israelis can explore what it means to be spiritual, what it means to be religious, that doesn't have to be both metaphorically and quite literally black and white. So that's one. And I can't thank you at Temple Sholem enough for helping us to advance these goals, helping us to do the critical advocacy that is so necessary to advance our mission by working tirelessly over the past few months as we work to represent our movement at the World Zionist Congress. Your help in the elections and your mobilization and galvanizing of your entire community helped advance our goals, helped us put people in key positions, and helped us secure critical funding that will go to help build our movement in Israel. And to your captains, and to your clergy, and to all of your staff who work tirelessly, you have my sincere and deep, deep gratitude. The second conclusion that I wanna to come to is that today, right now, is the moment to reinvent Israel diaspora relations. It's a moment to re-examine the relationship that we as North American Jews have with our brothers and sisters in Israel. In fact, now, during this time of pandemic, during this time of crisis, we have a unique opportunity where geography plays less of a role than it did in the past. And we can really bring out the world together just over technology. But I want us to think about our relationship with Israel rather than just a one-way street where we say, how can we help Israel? I want us to think about uh, as a, as a two-way street, as a mutual responsibility. We have a great deal to learn from Israel, a great deal to learn about what it means to revive the Hebrew language and living according to the Jewish calendar. But Israel also has what to learn from us. And with this, I'll end. And with this, I want you to think about, and I, I want you to think about the building that you have there on Lakeshore Drive. Think about the amazing structure that you've created and the community that supports it. Think about all the things that you've done to support staff, to build program, to bring in incredible rabbis and cantors and teachers and educators. And you did that with no help from the government. You see, we in the diaspora, we in the United States and in North America have figured out what it means to build vibrant Jewish communities that take care of each other and create Jewish life and contribute to society without any government support or in a privatized economy. And that, my friends, is the model that we must now export, that we must now bring to Israel and say, if you want to create Jewish community, you have to do what we've done. You have to roll up your sleeves and you have to give of your time, your energy, and of your own resources. And that's how we're going to change the face of Jewish life in Israel. And we're going to do it together. I want to end with just a prayer that we say each morning in our tefillah when we say, Or Chadash al Tzion Ta'ir, 
ונזכה כולנו מהרה לאורו. May we bring a new light upon Zion, and may we all merit quickly from that light. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi Weinberg. You uh, certainly bore witness to um, the amazing opportunities and the amazing challenges that uh, lie before us. Uh, and us, I mean, uh, Reformed Jews, uh, wherever we live here um, and in the, in the Holy Land of Israel. So Yasher Koach for a beautiful, beautiful presentation. I think we're going to be thinking about it um, for a long, long time. Um, I have to say you sparked a memory that I had, um, which was, uh, I have lots of memories of you, but it's a different kind of memory. Um, sparked a memory of um, National Arts uh, meeting that was a convention that was uh, housed at Temple Sholem. Uh, and the memory is sitting around with people in the basement, what is now the Mendelssohn Bath Gallery. And we started thinking about what it would mean for, for the Israeli reform movement to have an institution much like the Religious Action Center. Mm. And from that conversation grew, of course, sure. Iraq. And um, so just to underline what you said, uh, Temple Sholem has played a... Um, a crucial, crucial role through the years in uh, strengthening um, the Israeli reform movement and strengthening the connections between our movement here and uh, and, the Zion and Zionism. Um, I want to give a shout out also to, um, to John Siner, who really championed um, our uh, our movement towards uh, uh, getting the vote out. Uh, and we're just so, so proud of, uh, of him, the work he did, and uh, more importantly, uh, proud of and thankful for each one of our members who uh, pushed the buttons and paid 750 and registered their voice um, in, um, in support of Reform Judaism and progressive values uh, in, the, in the Jewish state. So thank you and uh, stay safe. Dash Ham, we buy it, we buy it. And uh, God willing, we'll be together again soon. So, um, thank you. Uh, as Rabbi Weinberg uh, noticed, noted um, this coming week, Monday night and uh, through Tuesday, um, is Yom HaShoah, Israel, or the um, Holocaust Memorial Day. And I'm going to put um, in the comments and the chat. Um, a, a link, um, I'll do this uh, maybe during the final song. Um, and uh, well, maybe I just did it. I'll put a link in there um, uh, for you to register for a um, special program that is being offered by uh, Shorashim. Um, it is a, a conversation with um, a Holocaust survivor. And um, I know it'll be very move me, moving and a, a way to uh, really commemorate um, the loss of the six million and all those who uh, who died Kiddush um, Hashem uh, for the glory um, of God and maintained their Jewish identity and uh, and whose memory will always be a blessing. Any other? I want to ask my colleagues any other announcements that we want to share about the upcoming week? I know there are a few things happening. Yes, I know on Sunday we have a special tekkes or a special ceremony with our religious school um, to be able to commemorate these dates. So um, if you're wanting to um, tune in on Facebook Live, that'll be happening around 1020. Um, I'll also say that um, a week from this Sunday, I'm going to be teaching a class called um, Put on a Sweater, I'm Cold, What American Jews Get Wrong About, Ameri about uh, Jewish Israelis. And um, it's based on a fascinating lecture um, that I think that you will hopefully enjoy as much as I did. Lots of new thinking there. Um, and, um, and I also wanna just thank again, uh, Rabbi Weinberg for, um, for really enlightening us this evening. I also wanna let you know that the cancer um, has blessed our, our 
rabbinic squad here um, to bring us home this evening. Um, she has a, uh, a family matter. There's not an emergency, but it is urgent that she needed to take care of. And so she needs to be able to take care of her family this evening. And of course, we support her in that. She's fine. She doesn't want you to worry. Um, uh, but she did need to be able to, to deal with the family matter. Well, friends, um, we begin to conclude our service as we turn to the bottom of page 586 and rise as we are able for Alenu. Alenu lishabeach la'adon ha'kol, latek gudulah liot se'ebreishit, shalo asanu kugoye ha'aratzot, velo ho'samanu k'mishpachot ha'adama, Shalo sam chelkenu kahem, vego horalenu kechol hamonam, va anachnu korim, umesh tachavim umodim, lifne melech malche hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu, vene emar, vahaya adonai, la melech al kol haaretz, Bayom hahu, Bayom hahu, Ie Adonai echad. Ushamo, Ushamo, Ushamo echad. The Mourner's Kaddish is on page 598. We think now of loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died at this this season and years past, those whom we have drawn into our hearts with our own, of course, all those victims around the world of this horrible, horrible virus. May their memories be ever a blessing. Remember on this Shabbat, those who were taken from us during this past month, Gloria Baskin, Francine M. Motenko, Stanley Lapidus, Dr. Philip Lapidus, Eugene Rosenfeld, Ronald Rosenson, Marcine Komen, Joan Elegant, Francine Emerson, Barbara Rumstein, Rose Gannon Amkie. And we recall with love and longing those whose yard sites are remembered this Shabbat. Ida G. Goodman, Muriel Hefferman, Marie Jean Geis uh, Geisken, Sally Pardo, William Pole, Daniel Schlanger, Florence Browdy, Sylvia Fisher, Jeannie Golub, Beth Cohn, Morty Cohn, Rose Fadum, Harold Ginsburg, Milton Kaufman, Dora Miller, Robert Perloff, Patricia Raisin, Sidney Schnitz, Dorothy Slavin, Bernice Spiegel, Margaret Fischel, Donald Levy, Della W. Manister, Past President Irv Unger, Maxine Oringer, Roland Barretts, Dr. Jacob Bernstein, Charlotte Jacobson, Lawrence Leventhal, Simon Fairman, Marilyn Kramer, Sarah Krulowicz. And if you'd like to mention anyone for our Kaddish, please uh, unmute yourself and um, share with us the name, or you can put it in the, uh, in the chat. Grenida Wolschek. I will share the names that were shared as well. Richard Tremutola, Rosalind Stern, Gary Kurland, and Florence Mary Browdy. The memories of all of them are with us, our griefs and sympathies mingle. As together we praise God, the source of life for the beautiful and enduring gift of memory and life with our Kaddish prayer. And that also includes the memory of Sandra Lavin. Yit gadal the yit gadash shemei rabba, the alma divarach irute v'yam lich malchute, the chayechon of yomechon, the chaye de chobek Yisrael, the agala uvisman kariv imru amen. Yehei shemei rabba mevorach le'olam u'almei almaya. 
it barach the ish tabach the it paar the it tromam the it nase the it hadar the it alet the it halal shemei the kudusha berichu leela min kol birchata v'shirata tush bechata v'nechamata the amiran ba'alma v'imru amen yehet shlama raba min shemaya the chayim alenu v'al kol yisrael v'imru amen o se shalom b'imromav. Who ya ase shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'inru. Amen. O se shalom b'im romav, who ya ase shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'inru. Amen. May the source of peace send peace to those who mourn, comfort to all of us who are bereaved, and let us as one family say, Amen. So I think um, I think maybe the the appropriate thing to do tonight, if I can find the page, is to uh, end with Hatikva, knowing that we have never never given up hope for the, uh, not only for the establishment of the Jewish state, but truly making the Jewish state the, uh, live up to its, uh, its hopes and its potentials. So if we Page can just- Page 678. 678, great, thank you. And if you choose to, you may want to rise. Kohol od balevav, Penima Nefesh Yehudi Homiya Ufate Mizrach Kadima Ayan Litzion Sophia Od Lo Avda Tikvate Nu Hatik va bach not al pahain, Liotam hochi be art senu, Eret sion berushalain, Liotam hochi be art senu, Eret sion berushalain. O God, above us, around us, within us, and between us, as grateful as we are for our lives, we struggle with our continued separation. Help us to remember that we are never alone, that we are never separate, that we are all one together in you and in community. We thank you for all the blessings in our lives, for our families, our friends, and this holy Shabbat. And we thank you for our leaders who inspire us to create a world of which you dream, a world where the Jewish people and all peoples can be free, independent, and choose their own destinies. We thank you for this wonderful community and for the opportunity to be together now and all days to come. Bless us with your nearness, your holiness, and your love. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Great being with everybody tonight. Have a blessed and safe uh, Shabbat, and thank you again, Rabbi Weinberg. Um, you really, uh, it was really a grand slam. So uh, hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.